Hello, everybody. Sandra Adelaide here. Слушай, за девушку не работает, а свет после двери. Свет, да. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Lalon Adebayo, welcome. The Pridey Pridey Bobby Spray. All the way you may have did this, she can fight tomorrow. Baby Undum, Lola Shoronke, Nikki Okoro, George Tomin, Justin Mayo, Shao Smith, Bobby Bakwena, Mimi Naga, Apostle Yomi, good morning. Jake Hone, okay, good morning. Alewu Okwa, Fle Karim Matif, Ladik. Ladi Shorunke Bola Luro, good morning everyone. Felicia Folorun Show, good morning, Folorun Show. Ayobami Ogunwa, good morning, Alain Paradis. Didim Nana, good morning, Pastor Irene, morning. Dodo, wow, what a name, good morning, Dodo. Uh, Abasi Betty Godwin. Paul Eric, good morning from Sweden. Ije Oma Agala, good morning. Uh, Justina King, good morning. Ajibowo Afolabi, good morning. Sorry, oh, uh, did he say Petrovich? Uh huh, excess Petrovich. Wow. That person must be studying somewhere here, I guess. Russia White, Sia Big Martin, Popo Laoluatoi. Buriwe, Paul, Magnus, yeah, Pastor Magnus, hi. Well, all of to all of you that are coming on already, will you please be kind enough to go share the link? Let's start our day by going to share the link. Vilma Matsuki, yeah, go, good morning. Adu Ajay, good morning. Laisa. Ligavat, Ligavatu from Fiji. Wow. Blessings, blessings, Daisa. Ajibo uh, Afolabi Petrovich. <laughs> okay, I studied in Harkov. I see, it. I can understand. I wonder how can someone who is Afolabi be Petrovich? Not a favor, I saw water, I saw water. Blessings, Oluwa Yomia Dedeji, Godom Farrell. Good morning, everyone. Let's go share the link. Let's go share the link, and we'll be ready to go. Jerry Seal, Marie Ajero from Abu Dhabi. Barnabas, Barnabas. Shioma is here. Ali, uh, she Sandra. Okay, have you all shared the link? If you have shared the link. We'll be ready to go. Today, I want to talk about, uh, I see, I'm still talking on the church. And the topic that I'm talking about today is how church is supposed to be done. How church is supposed to be done. And I got this idea from a comment that I received last night. I don't know some of you, if you, some of you were there last night, we had, a, <laughs> we had an exciting time with one of our ladies that came to testify. Uh, she came to uh, just tell her story about how she is bringing the kingdom of God to our world. And uh, that testimony also was exciting. But I have actually, uh, every Saturday and Sundays, we have practical testimonies from members of the church that are actually advancing the kingdom of God with power and uh, with wisdom and with authority. And uh, they are showing us how church is supposed to be done. And uh, so after the message yesterday, after the um, interview with, uh, with uh, Olia, Olia, her name is Olia, Olga, and um, somebody wrote a comment. And this comment was uh, saying, we are learning every day how church is supposed to be done. We, thanks to these meetings, to these messages, to these uh, testimonies. Because the testimonies bring another dimension, I suppose. 
and they probably show that you know the things I'm saying they are not just theory. But it's one thing for me just to teach, and everybody teach these days. But I suppose the testimonies bring a dimension of saying that these teachings are actually being practicalized. Yeah, you see, even the non Nadebayo right now is saying Olga's testimony was awesome and mind blowing. Ah, bonus. So, uh, so um, yeah. And uh, so the, she, the, the, it was Lyo, Lyo Emmanuel, Lyo Charles Emmanuel that wrote me yesterday and told me about the fact that, uh, you know, these testimonies and these messages, they are changing our understanding about how church has been done and how church ought to be done. And so I had an idea. I, I wanted to invite her, <laughs> Lady Lyo Charles Emmanuel, to come and tell me more about it this morning and uh, what she's learning and what is it that uh, is making her to come to that conclusion that they are learning how church is supposed to be done. So she can make it this morning, but she sent the husband. I wanted to get the two of them with the husband, but the husband is here. And I have another lady that is uh, not less eloquent that is going to uh, be speaking to us as well in place of Lyle. Uh, so I have two people with me today that I'll be going to be talking with, just hearing from them what are they learning about church and what, what, how is church supposed to be done. And that is the topic for today. But then I'm going to continue on my series on the church on Monday. So how is church supposed to be done? And let me introduce you the husband of Lyo here. And uh, he's Pastor Charles. He's a pastor himself, so he knows how church is being done and what he's learning and how church is supposed to be done henceforth. So, Charles Emmanuel, how are you doing today? Fine, thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much, sir, for the opportunity to be here with you today. It's, yeah. it's such a honor, sir. Yes, so uh, you just heard what I said now. Yes, sir. About the comment of your wife, that we are learning how church is supposed to be done. Uh, what will you say about that? Yeah, actually, the Pastor, I... I <coughs> absolutely agree with, with that statement because yeah. we, we ourselves like you rightly said pastor we have been in the ministry for a while okay we have played according to the motions <laughs> we, have, we have followed the norm we have followed what we, we what was passed down to us what we were taught what, what we were taught what we grew up to know mm -hmm. and and what we are receiving from you pastor is a far cry from what we have seen oh my gosh, it's 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 completely different this is revolution <laughs> I can wonder if most of those who have gone ahead of us or the rest of the world could have access to this message, Pastor, church would, church would metamorphose around the world. The difference will be clear. For, for most of us, what we know about church is just somewhere we should go and chill out on Sunday after a very hectic week. Ah, are you serious? <laughs> yes, Pastor. In fact, for some people, that's where they can get to catch up with people they didn't have the opportunity to see <laughs> within the week. It's more like a, a spiritual social gathering. And, and we just, just come in and feel good. And, and that's, why, that's why churches are narrated by the kind of music that they have. Okay. How, how, sound, how we can compare the sound system I to what see. is available in the clubs. So if the sound is not good enough, the people think that the church has not come of age. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we're hearing from you now, Pastor, you is going to be Amazing. Is, is completely different. We, we can now see what church really should be like. And the beautiful thing about it, Pastor, is that you, you make it clear from the scriptures. We, we can see through the scriptures. It, it's not just a, a one man's theory or one man's idea of what church should be like. This is what the Amen. word of God says. So it's, it's beautiful to, be, to have the opportunity to actually know for ourselves what the word says. Because many of us just followed without really checking out to see if that's what the word says. Hmm. We assume that those who, who do it this way should know better. But unfortunately, they haven't exactly known better. <laughs> so they just did what they knew or what they thought was right or for whatever reason. And then we just came up to follow the same Lord sequence. Yes, sir. It, 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 it's, it's amazing what we are learning from you, Pastor. It, it's amazing. I, I, I was telling my wife a, a few days ago as we started this church series that our lives would have been a thousand times better if we had knew half this truth all this while. 
if we need just your lives or your ministry? Our lives and ministries, sir. Our lives and ministries. If you just knew half this truth all this while, it would have been a thousand times better. I, I'll share with you, Pastor, how that we, we made a, a terrible decision uh, some years ago that uh, I'm not beginning to see how it had vastly affected us in ministry. Because at, at the time, we used to have five churches in the city that were reaching out to different communities and different groups of people because in our city, we had different nationalities present. And some of them had issues understanding um, our kind of English. So accent. We, yeah, yes, sir. So we, we had a pastor who would speak their own accent and help them to communicate the message clearly. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we wanted to measure up with what is available in the society. We wanted to, to measure up with the, the bigger the, congregations. The number of people. <laughs> the number of people that gathered in one place. So, so we decided to merge the churches together. And church so, that it will be bigger. so that it will be bigger. And, and funny enough, Pastor, it didn't exactly become bigger. Wow. It, it, it was a mystery. We were reaching more people when we were in our respective groups than church. For years, we just thought maybe we needed a new strategy, we needed to plan better, we needed to increase our, our, all other things. But we couldn't see that we were going against the ideal standard. And now we can see clearly what exactly we didn't do rightly. So you actually lost people as a result? Yes, Pastor, we did. We did. We lost a, a reasonable number of people. A reasonable number of people, sir. Wow. Just because we wanted to do church the way it Other is, people it is are doing done it. everywhere. So what do you think your wife meant when he made that statement yesterday? When she made that statement that we are learning how church is supposed to be done? Yes, sir. What she meant is that now we are better equipped for church. We, we know better how we should run church, exactly, especially as pastors now. We can see from the, what our roles should be, what our responsibility should be, how we should function, what we should do with the people that we have in our custody, the people that we have in our, in our community, what we should do with them is becoming clearer. Because before, it's just like, let's just have Sunday service and let's have a wonderful time on Sunday and everybody go and have a beautiful Monday to Saturday. <laughs> then we come back next Sunday and enjoy ourselves again. But now we can see that that Sunday, Sunday, Sunday is not even the beginning of church. We haven't even started church by having just Sunday meetings. Now it's not just about the quality of the service we had on Sunday. It's nothing. But, it doesn't but, even have anything to do with <laughs> what Christianity is. Yes, sir. Christianity is supposed to be every day and supposed to start from Monday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it, it's a lot clearer now and we are, we are rearranging ourselves. <laughs> we, are, we are rearranging ourselves for, for better ministry now. Now, I have another lady here, because since Layo Charles Emmanuel decided not to show up, <laughs> your wife, <laughs> I have uh, Fisayo Sheye. Fisayo. Your last Ayeye. 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 Wow, what a name. <laughs> is that your Yoruba name? It is, sir. Yeah, you know the meaning? Yes, sir. Wow, okay, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay, How are you, Mrs. Fisayo? Uh, good morning, Pastor. It's a great privilege to be here on this platform. You know, thank you very much, son. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be you know, here with you this morning. Will you introduce yourself a little bit, let people know you more? Okay, my name is uh, Fisayo Ayaye. I'm a medical student in Ukraine here in my sixth course and... It's a great privilege. Sixth year? Yes, sir. Sixth year. Mm -hmm. year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's a great privilege to, to know Pastor. And I wish I'd you know, met him and had you know, some of his teachings before I did. But thank God I didn't miss out finally. I, 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 I got the messages and I'm really, really listening to it because it's, it's not what is obtainable anywhere. I tell you, it's, oh, it's, it's something that will, that will transform you from inside. We break down worlds of um of long years of ignorance long years of religion and it will it will build you up from inside such that wherever you find yourself you will be strong and solid such that you can bring god's kingdom god's value god's principle and influence the earth thereby glorifying god so it's, it's what has been happening to you personally since uh, what has been happening to you since you, you've been listening to these teachings? Okay, since I've been listening to these uh, teachings, it's, it's, 
it's a, it's a reformative from inside. First, it broke down the mindset of religion, of how we thought things were supposed to be. How we so you were thinking of church differently before Absolutely. you started listening to this? Absolutely, sisters? sir, because I, I, I was born in you know, a Christian home, grew up in church, was in church all through my life to this moment. So I observed and experienced something very different, very different from what I've been hearing since I started listening to your teachings. And it's, it's, it's so, it's so in, interesting that God's plan for man is so big that we choked ourselves up in religion. And these teachings are just liberating and transforming one. So especially Pastor asked that about the church this yeah. morning yeah. and why, 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 do, why do we do church? Yeah. Why church? Yeah. And it's beautiful because pastors actually started from the beginning of why start a church? Why in church in place, the first yeah. place? Mm -hmm. If something is it's, it's necessary, then the importance should be known. And that's the foundation. And pastor thought that it is from the heart of God. It is as a response of God to ignorance of mankind about him. And that's yeah. the purpose. Sure. And oh, that is so mind-blowing to know that actually God wanted man, us, to know him. That is why he founded church. Yeah. That is why he, he, he made church. Why? That is why he grounded church. And church should be a source where we go to to know more about God. And what... Now, Pastor took it to another le level. What is church supposed to be doing? And that is clearing ignorance. 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 The Bible says, people, my people perish because they lack knowledge. And knowledge is, is it's, it's darkness. It's darkness. So if we don't know God, we begin to live in darkness. So church is to clear ignorance, is to bring truth, is to bring light, such that we begin to know how humans are supposed to function because we cannot know how we're supposed to function and live and exist outside God who created us. So the church is supposed to be teaching us and giving us what it is to live, to live for, to live with, to, to do from God because the church is now the source of truth. And when the church begins to impact the members with this truth, then we take it out to the society. And I mean, the church will now be everywhere in the society, in every Brilliant. sphere of life. Now, now yesterday, when, when uh, Lyo, it's like I said, it's Lyo that provoked me to, uh, to, to want to talk to somebody today, to want to talk to you people. Mm -hmm. I wanted to talk to her, but thank God, you know, you people are here as well. So uh, she said, after the testimony yesterday, mm -hmm after uh, uh, Olga's testimony yes, sir. because every Saturday and Sunday we come with the practical uh, analysis yes, and testimonies and stories of how real people, ordinary people are actually carrying the kingdom of God yes, to their life, no, to their daily life yes, and to their way of life. Yes, so why is it that it is, yes, yes, that was the comment that came mm -hmm. not just after I'm preaching because you are talking about my <laughs> preaching. But she was talking about, you know, the practical aspect of it. And it was after that practical aspect that she made that comment that this is the way church is supposed to be mm -hmm. done. What do you think she was referring to? I could relate. Or why, yeah, you could relate to that? I could relate to what uh, okay. Pastor Lyle was trying to, you know, ex to express in our comment yesterday. Okay. Um, Olga, who gave her testimony yesterday, right. actually started from a position where she had nothing. She lost everything, right. hopeless, and had no clue or idea what she could do. So at that time, she was in ignorance. She was in darkness. Ah. So coming to church, um, God's embassy, and listening to your teacher and taking the classes of University of Life, right. gave her light, hmm. gave her direction. Right. So she could think, even though she was in that darkness, but when the light came to her spirit, the knowledge came, she became free. And she converted that light mm -hmm. into something practical, right. tangible in physical world. Right. For example, she was in, in debt due to the you know, economic meltdown and she, she owed the bank and the bank wanted to you know, get her to sue her to court to pay. But she, 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 from the teaching, she, she had to convert that 
problem into solution. She got the light. And what's the light? She went to get knowledge. She right. went to law school. Right. And when she came out, she got solution. Mm -hmm. So the church, your teaching in the church impacted her with the light, mm -hmm. with the truth of what she should do with her problem. And that's beautiful. Another example she, she noticed that was when there was a problem with the, in the eastern part of Ukraine, when people were displaced internally, she thought about this. How could she do this? Another truth flashed, you know, came into her spirit and she knew what to do exactly by making it to be out for everybody to, or the, the government or everyone in the country to be aware. There are people in this country who are displaced and the awareness attracted solution even outside the borders of Ukraine. So she solved another problem. So the teachings she got from the University of Life, from your teachings and training, got her spirit alive with the truth. She, she began to see solution around every problem. And she so much believed in herself that she could provide answers. So if she was not exposed to those teachings or those trainings, she would never have even thought she could be solution or there could be even a way to do it or the, the solution would be from her. So that comment from her was, if she had been in church and not heard the teachings you gave her, she would just be there wallowing in the ignorance or in her problems and she, could, she wouldn't have been able to help herself or help anyone else. So that comment from Pastor Lyo is, what would have happened if she was locked up in church and would, do, would just be in church the way we, it's commonly known these days too, that we do church? Brilliant. Now, Charles, yes, your wife, you might also know some things about the thoughts of your wife. So what do you think was the reason why your wife uh, said that, in, not after the preaching sessions, but because she was making different comments during the preaching sessions, but she made this comment after uh, a testimony, a testimonial session. Why, you know, what, what, what was she trying to tell us? Yes, Pastor. What, what she was trying to say is actually the fact that um, church, like we have known it, uh, when we talk about testimonies in church, <laughs> it's about it's about how <laughs> it's, about, it's about how somebody got a car or how somebody paid off debt or how somebody got healed of one disease or the other or in fact the worst pastor is how somebody did not write did not read for an exam and miraculously passed. <laughs> so <laughs> so that's what testimony looks like. But here we are listening to testimonies of people who are not just talking about how their lives were changed. But so it's not so testimonies from the embassy of God you have discovered it's not egocentric. It's not self. It's not self-centered. It's not only about me, myself, and I, hmm. as it it is generally known to be. Instead, hmm. it's about how people have been able to represent the kingdom effectively. Hmm. How people have been able to carry the kingdom to their world and sphere of influence, right. even though they themselves started out as being needy people. So, even <laughs> testimonies are about the kingdom? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. It's, that, that's what you were saying when she said that now we know how church should be run. It's, it's very clear now. We now understand what church is all about. We, we know what it's all about, sir, and we, 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 are, we are so ready to take our word by storm. That testimony yesterday, and even the ones we had the weeks before, they have been, they have been mind-blowing. To think that somebody can start from nowhere to become not just an influence. Not focusing on our own pressing issues yes, sir. and pressing problems. Yes, not sir. being carried away hmm. by the need to resolve our own personal problems, right? Hmm. Yes, sir. In fact, you, you don't even just teach people how to resolve prob their problems. You help them turn their problems into their stage. Mm. So what used to be a problem becomes the platform for them to launch to the world. Mm -hmm. and, and like she was saying yesterday, she had lived in that city, that town for a while. For mm. her life, all her life. Nobody knew her. Nobody heard her story. But she comes in contact with the message of the kingdom and then uses the same message to turn around things in her environment. 
she was no longer thinking about how she's going to sell herself, how she's going to survive without a man. Instead, she's thinking about the other young people Mashaka in the same community Mashaka who Mashaka might be Mashaka going Mashaka through the same things she has gone through. Mashaka that is that is kingdom, sir. Mashaka that that is, is kingdom. I can imagine if just half the population of people who attend Sunday services around the world would take their message, their story, and go and change only two lives. Only two. The world will be a better place today, Pastor. And, and that's why we always emphasize that we need to we need to spread this message. We need we need to get as many as we can to hear. This is this is not just church as usual. This is this is exactly what I can imagine how God will express his, how his heart feels seeing stories like this. It's not just about how many people we have been able to gather to sit in a place. Now we are talking about uh, membership strength and, um, and uh, a size of auditoriums and, and all of all that. But here is one woman, one, one person, person, <laughs> person. And, and from one person, we are seeing a, a little town of 50,000 people being changed. From one person, we are seeing a, city, a, a whole of Kiev city being changed. From one person, this, the, it, it was getting bigger by the year. To the whole country. <clears throat> now the whole country. And then she's attracting international bodies. Mashaka, babaka, one babaka, person. Babaka, babaka, and all this happened, Pastor, in just about babaka, seven babaka, years. Babaka, it's it's mind blowing. Why, why some people would have been somewhere, in fact, for example, Pastor, uh, uh, in some part of the world, they say that someone needs to sit in a Bible school for four years, reading Bible before you can become a pastor. I can imagine <laughs> that while some people are sitting in Bible school reading Bible and learning theory and filling their head with theory, somebody else has gone far. She has made tremendous progress, recorded so much success, and the whole world is shaking for it. But to think about the families of those that she, she, she got the government to concentrate on, people who had lost everything. What else is the gospel? What else is the gospel? But how is the church done in other places? Because uh, some of our people, when you, they don't even know this, not how every church is. <laughs> Actually, Pastor, that's so true. That's so true. And, and I really bless God for them because... Uh, they think this is the only way every church is. <laughs> they think when you talk about church, this is exactly what you mean. This, every church is doing what we are doing. Wow. They didn't wow. even know churches could be do, done otherwise. Pastor, I, I believe that's why God did not give you the opportunity to experience church. In, in, uh, in the Nigerian yeah, setting before, I came. before he, he pulled you out of the system Shaka because Baba. because it would have been serious the church <laughs> the church we know is, is even when there are, there are crises in some part of the world and the church decides to be and to influence at the most they will collect offering and and send offering to the places but nothing else is done to touch these lives to influence these people Pastor, from what the, we, we saw all they're doing, it is not going to be difficult to tell these people about Christ. In yes. fact, they are at the mercy of whatever we have to say. Right. But instead, what we do is just print us manner of things, just let them come to church and, and, and that's all. Our focus is just come to church. Just come to church. And then when they come to church, we don't have much to do with them other than to give them offices around and then Christians are ministering to Christians and then... Um, at the end of the day, it begins to feel like we are being stifled. But what you have shown us, Pastor, is a model that would work anywhere. This is a model that can change the world anywhere. In fact, now I understand why you say that it is, you don't understand how you can be in a city for, for two years and the, and the city is not changed. Yeah. Now I can understand. It's not just about talking. The, the system is clear. If, if, if one person alone can do all this, imagine what pastor can do in a yeah, place, even if it's the place you have never been known. Even if you are only 10 people. It is very clear. Now we, we know what real church, church should be about. So now, it's not about just numbers. Do you now understand what I was saying when I said, you know, when I, I said what I was going to do with the Muslims? Or with the internally displaced people, <laughs> with the you know, Boko Haram area, not not uh, not west of Nigeria, and the, the you know you are I, now understand where I'm coming from. I, absolutely, Pastor. Absolutely, we we can see that there's so much that can be done, and we can see the possibilities in what you have been telling us. Like I said, Pastor, some time ago, initially when you talked about two thousand people going to to Nigeria, I was wondering two thousand. <laughs> what are they going to be doing? It's going to be boring. Nigeria of all places, 2,000 people. But when we began to see the full picture of what is involved, 
The new idea is that 2,000 people will not be enough. Yes. In fact, we will need much more than 2,000 people. But even with 2,000 people, following this model, there is no doubt that things will change drastically in our country. We can see that God has put so much in us. And the best we can do is just sit, in, sit somewhere and be whiling away the time. And at the most, we pray to God to come and fix what he has asked us to do. But, Pastor, thank you for, for revealing what church should be about. Honestly, I, I would to God that we, we knew this earlier in our lives. But they say it's better late than never. We are grateful to have been exposed to these truths. We are grateful to have been exposed to these truths. Thank you so much. Sir. Now, Fisayo, you Fisayo. mentioned uh, the problem, one of the problems that this lady decided to resolve, yes, which is the problem of internally displaced people. Right, and we have internally displaced people in our country as well. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine that? This, I didn't tell her to go and do that. Mm -hmm. It's just out of the teachings in the church that anything you have a burden for, mm -hmm. anything that is troubling you, anything that is you know, paining your heart, is what you're supposed to deal with. So she's been trained like that. Mm -hmm. And she's also been trained that any problem is a platform. Mm -hmm. Problems are not tragedies. They are not mm -hmm. catastrophes. So she herself uh, decided to respond. Mm -hmm. And that was her response. And then it brought the whole world to her feet. Mm -hmm. Now, my question to you is, do you, with listening to these testimonies, how do you see the challenges of Nigeria? Do you see possibilities? That even with internally displaced people or armed robbers or all that problem that we might have in the country, what do you say, Fisai? Uh, absolutely, sir. I see the problems or of internally displaced people or any other problem in Nigeria being able to be fixed. Because when the model, when the system is made and it's being practically done here in Ukraine and it's yielded results, then in Nigeria it can be. Because, one, people are people. People respond to love. Hmm. People are attracted to the solution of the problem they're experiencing. She did that because she has been trained to do that. So if we, if people in Nigeria who have the body, whichever area it might be, they should identify it first and go there. And naturally, people carrying the problem or the problem in that environment will be attracting the answers in them. And easily when the answers are provided, they accept it. So any problem, any, any um, maybe, in, okay, for example, sir, you told me to talk about internally displaced people. In Nigeria, maybe due to religious crisis or um, racial crisis or from different, maybe local government, or whichever crisis might have displaced people. Now, as a Christian, I'll use myself as an example. I know how it feels to be displaced from home, com from comfort, from good sleep, from good um, amenities, from food, from peace. Then if I go there and give them that which I know they, they need, they will automatically receive me. And not just receive me, receive the Christ, receive the message of the kingdom that I've brought with you. Because I will simply not point it as me giving them, but there is the God, our God, and is, you know, in heaven that has sent us, has sent me to give them this solution. So easily they would understand and be able to feel God's love to enjoy it, to touch it, because it has met their need. Can you now connect this back to the message I gave the other day? It was it yesterday or so? I gave a message, or maybe two days ago, about uh, how God bust my theology. And a real ministry is not mm. preaching, it's mm. not teaching, it's not doing miracles, mm. it's not wearing suits mm. or carrying Bible. And a real ministry is to make people feel the mm. touch of God, the God's love. Right, to sir. make people feel the touch of God's love. Right, Do sir. you connect that with what Oga and other people have been talking about? Oh, yes. Testifying about? Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I could connect easily because when I read the Bible, I see Jesus did not sit in a place. Jesus, everywhere he found himself, is always touching people, solving problems. And that is the same thing. God has sent us his children, Christians, to do. So how God busted your theology of not just saying it's the four words, it's my suit, it's my, my grammar, it's my revelation, but it's how people can feel it, how people can touch that love of God, how people can experience it. And I can relate that. That's the same message you've passionately impacted Christians here in your church. 
whereby they go and think, how can I touch people? How can I... So how did Olga do that? Did oh, that? She, first, she identified she needed skills. She needed skills to do that. So she acquired skills to help her to be professional, to be standard in giving out that love. For example, she went to law school. And when she got that skill, she could defend people who are, who, who, who are being, you know, who, who are lacking, who, who need, like, yeah. who are being oppressed by, by you know, by, by that crisis. And she solved it. So, and internally displaced people, how did she do it? She, she made an, an awareness in the country. And that awareness attracted press. And the whole eye of the world were, you know, were on that awareness. And that attracted even help from outside the country. To, you know, to help solve that solution because she alone at that moment she might not be able to help the whole you know, people who are internally displaced but our, 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 our skill or the, 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 the method she used attracted even more hands to help those you know, in that need so relating the true ministry is relating and giving out the love of God in us to people touching people with the love of God which will definitely help people in their time of needs or with their problems and it will pull them out and make them enjoy and feel God close to them and easily they can give their lives to Him and even start the same thing by sharing that same love they enjoy to everyone around them. Will you say that that principle I was teaching? Yes, sir. That, so my teaching that I give it's no more a preaching or a message that is just coming forth from the pastor that this teaching is actually being turned into, into flesh. It's been practicalized not just by me, but even by people who, hear, who have taught, uh, who have come into church. Because sometimes you go to church, preaching is preaching. You, get, you just clap, get as excited, the pastor got happy, and everybody goes, oh, my own forgot, talk to less of you practicalizing or really living it. People don't, there's no connection between the, the preaching that people give and living, what people are living. So, but here, could you see that that, that revelation that I said, ministry, and that revelation itself is the touch of God's love, that it has become uh, something that even members of the church are now living out. Will, will you testify to, to, towards that? Absolutely, sir. Because... Um you 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 are a father to them and they saw how you reached out with that love of God to them and reaching out to them made them enjoy and felt it and they did not just get exi excited about it they took that same principle and went out and converted what they learned what they saw what they enjoyed from you to reach out to people also so the preaching of just getting excited or the theory or how we feel and we just go home and that's the end. It's not in, in, in true ministry. True ministry is understanding, understanding the, the love of God, the, the how God cares for man so much that he, he wants everything to, 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 be, to be at peace, to be at, um, harmony. At, at harmony. Because he created us and he has placed everything in order. So if, but if we don't understand to line ourselves up with this order and system, we may not enjoy this. So your teaching, the ministry that you passed on to them, they understood it because they first enjoyed it. They first experienced it. And now it became part of them that they had to go out. And it, because it's now part of them, they began to look around. How can I give this love? How can I pass this love? How can I impact this love to people? And that is what exactly ministry is. Okay, still talking about talking about ministry and how church is supposed to be done. Uh, Pastor Charles, what yes, will you say to all that? You know, Pastor, when you talk about practicality uh, of the of the message, yes, I, I remember a, a story of a, a lady who went to church, and then when she came back from church, uh, a friend was asking her how was church today, and then as the friend was asking her how was church today. Now, instead of her to just say what she learned, she was saying that ah, it was great, it was great. And the friend was saying, what do you mean it was great? What, what did the pastor say? He said, it was just powerful. It was powerful. What did the pastor say? She actually did not remember anything that was said in that service. But all she knew to say was that it was great. It was just great. You know, because many times people just hear words that they cannot apply to their lives. 
there's like preaching over people's heads. They just hear philosophies and they're excited for the moment, but it doesn't go beyond that. But what we have seen with you, Pastor, is, is words that we can take and use for ourselves and get real results in a real world where there are real problems. I remember the story of, of uh, um, Tatiana that I talked about a few, a few days ago who, who went into the educational sphere because she discovered how that she had, she, she became a life swerved because of the problem in the educational system. And now, having been changed, having been transformed, she decided to go back to the same school where she had been, had been uh, expelled because of her, her attitudes and all that. Mm. Now, it, it's interesting to see. I just wonder what it felt like in that school to see somebody who they had expelled out of school for misconduct come back with a solution to the same problem for which she was expelled. This is gospel. I mean, what else are we talking about? If, if several years ago somebody was chased for a reason, and then she comes back with the solution to the same reason why she was changed. I think that is the gospel. And not only did she was she able to bring about the solution in her school, through her, the whole of Kiev cannot implement the system that she has adopted. It, it's it's mind blowing. And she developed that, that she that she developed. It's it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. She is not she, at the time this whole began, she wasn't even an educator. Now through no. the principles you thought she was a prostitute. <laughs> principles you taught her, she was able to now take it from there, she went to school, she finished school, and then we got the same principles, the same thing we have been hearing every day, just applied to the educational sphere. And now, the whole country, in fact, I like the fact that even students who were running away from mathematics class, people were running away from other more important Difficult, subjects. Yeah. <laughs> You know, but when they saw the story of somebody who has been like them, somebody who suffered what they are suffering, and now bringing them solution, everybody came in for the class. It, it, it's an indication of how appli applicable the messages you are bringing us are. It's not just preach and then we quote things from our head, but there are, are no applications. These are real life applications of, of people who are putting these words to work and they are seeing tremendous results. So yes sir, it's, it's, really, it's really working. It's really working. We but can't. When your wife talks about now we are seeing how church is supposed to be done. So how is church supposed to be done? Pastor, the first thing we should do with any human person that we have in church now is to first find out which sphere of life they are called to function. In the days of extensive membership classes that teach nothing relevant have come to an end. Now the real class is help them quickly discover what problem of this world they were called to solve and then show them the path to develop themselves, become the best in solving that problem, make, do their researches and then start ministry. That's where the ministry is. That's where the church should be. Now, now the church is a going church now, not one that sits and waits for people to come. <laughs> You know, so, so we should say that we know how church can be done now. We know. We now understand. We now understand. And frankly, Pastor, if just half the population of our churches would, would put this message to work, just half, there is no reason why any country will be crying and waiting for a Messiah governor to come and solve their, solve their problems. There is no reason why any country would hope that a president will be sworn into, into office and things will change overnight. We will take our destinies in our hands and solve our problems by ourselves and give ourselves the, the results that we really desire. So, assume, let's assume you are in Nigeria. Yes, sir. If you are in Nigeria and starting a church. Yes, sir. So, do you now see where my confidence is coming from that I can change the country? <laughs> what will you see? Can you now see that even you can do it if Pastor. you get the formula? That's just about knowledge. <laughs> Pastor, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, we're, we're already planning to implement the same structures even among students. Mm -hmm. We can see how this would work among yeah, students. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can yeah, see yeah, how it would yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, students, they're they setting subjects, especially in medical school, that students consider very difficult. And, and now, looking in retrospect, I can imagine we, 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 had, we had the best students of the school in church. Wow. And they were sitting down doing nothing. We're just clapping our hands together and enjoying ourselves. And singing praise and worship. And singing praise and worship. Now, I can imagine if we had channeled those people to provide solutions to the, to the students around, the, the difference would have been clear. 
So in Nigeria, it's just simple. We just get into the environment and then we begin straight away identifying problems that we are here to solve. And, and, and that's where the church will begin from. No, pro not identifying problems that the government is supposed to solve. No, sir. No, sir. God is not looking for government. <laughs> <laughs> He has no business looking for government when he has us on board. Mm. It is not, it's, a, it's a misplaced order, but we have rearranged the order now, sir. We, are, we have put it in the, in the right order. So, the problem of Nigeria is actually solvable? Yes, sir. Absolutely solvable. Absolutely solvable. And it, it, is, it has no spiritual intonation. It's simple. It's just simple. It's, <laughs> it's understanding. Yes, sir. It's a problem of understanding. Yes, sir. It's not a problem of let's pray more. No, sir. We have prayed enough. We have, we have prayed enough. <laughs> if it's for praying, we have prayed enough. <laughs> Since that we have prayed. Please, <laughs> <laughs> what will you say into that? <laughs> okay, sir. Um, like what Pastor Charles has said, just looking at Nigeria, we you know now it's clear. First of all, do you think that this gospel, because some people say, Pastor Sunday is talking like that because he's not on ground. He's not been here. He's been out of the country for 30 years. And he doesn't you know those things can work in Europe. Do you think this gospel could be applicable in Africa, in Nigeria? Oh, yes, sir. The gospel of the kingdom of God is for every man. Yes, but this particular application that we are having here, how could it work? Okay, sir. Tell us. It, if it, you are the pastor in Nigeria. <laughs> how will it work? First, we have to make sure the walls of the church are broken mm. broken by how we'll train everyone in church to identify their own their own body mm. their calling their mm. purpose mm. and help them and equip them to gain skills mm. to be to be standard to 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 be professional and send them out mm. to deliver it how for example in in education system if we find maybe in schools there are some certain, some, some certain behaviors in, of no students. Right. There are definitely students who have, grad, who have graduated and in the church. We mm. can build mm. them up if they have the passion for students mm -hmm. and train them on how they can relate to students because they've been in that environment and they knew the challenges they faced. Equip them and send them back to those same schools to, to attract people and have, uh, it will be like life. They, they can relate because... They, they, they see them as they were once part of them. So this student will accept this solution and listen just the same way um, Tatiana did. So it is very, very, very possible to implement this system in Nigeria because Nigeria, people are in Nigeria. Human beings respond to love. They seek solutions to, for their problems and it's the message of the kingdom of God. With this system, with this model that you've used in Ukraine would work in all, we all work also in Nigeria, so it's not a question of will it be possible, will it not be possible, it is absolutely possible. So it's not a matter of, oh, Pastor Sunday has not been in Nigeria, he has been in Europe for long, no. The system is there and it's working and bringing it to Nigeria, it will work because we have seen it work here and people in Nigeria will respond to love. People in Nigeria will respond to solution because everybody knows there are problems in Nigeria and everybody is asking and seeking for answers and solutions. So if the message of the kingdom of God, we bring these answers, people would receive it. People would accept it because it is the only thing they yearn for right now. Okay. Now I'll ask you the same question I just asked uh, Pastor Charles. Uh, so the wife, Pastor Charles' wife, Laya said, we now know how church is supposed to be done. So how is church supposed to be done that is not being done right now everywhere? How is this supposed to be done so going forward, moving forward? Church, first of all, church now, it's supposed to get its, its, its purpose. The purpose of the church has to return to mm. it. And that is to uphold the truth and to impact people with the truth. And that is... But they will tell you that's exactly what they are doing. What are they doing that is not exactly the, what, you are, what you are talking about? The content of what? Of the truth. Because content of the truth is not living for ourselves. 
Okay. The content is not live. It's not. It's not a message. It's not the Christianity of me myself. No, it's to carry God to people. So the church is that we that we used to know is just about pray for myself and my family or get things for myself and my family. Mm -hmm. But now it's about getting the nation redeeming stress of life back to God. So people's mentality should be changed towards looking at themselves from ego, okay. from just myself or my family or friend, to nations, to people, to the whole sphere of life, depending on where your calling is. What about if they say that, but you know, I'm having problem. What do I do with my own problem? Okay. One's problem is, uh, is a signal to seek for solution. And if we are in, if, if you, we are in church, the church has the solution. So getting that solution in church is not for ourselves alone, but is to have even people in the same problem. Okay. So, so my problem is, is for me to know what I'm supposed to deal with in life. Yes, sir. And my problem is for me to know how to not just get out of that problem personally, but how to now become an expert in delivering and becoming a savior to similar people who are in, to people who are in similar problems yes, and in similar circumstances. Okay. So, so actually, my problem is a pointer to me of what I'm supposed to deal with in life. Yes, sir. And so I should get skillful. Yes, sir. I should become a master over that problem. Yes, sir. So that my problem will now become a propeller yes, sir. and a you know a a, a platform through which I build myself a great influence mm. and a great followership by solving yes, the massive national pro that problem on the national level. Yes, sir. Is that what you're trying to say? Absolutely, sir. So that the solution that we get will not just be for myself. We will stop seeking for selfish interest. We will stop, stop seeking for just to, to, to please ourselves. But to, to, it's, it's more about people. It, the beauty of life is to live for people. Is to is to help people and to restore people back to God. Is to restore stress of life back to God. Is to redeem nations back to God. So the problems that we we'll see today that maybe individuals are experiencing is a signal, uh, you know, a lesson that we should go forth and seek solution and not just keep it to ourselves, but to go out and help every other person that might be experiencing that problem in our spheres of life, including our nation. Thank you so much. Now, I have just a few more minutes to go. And the question I have for you, uh, Pastor Charles, is so what, would, what does church mean then? What does church, what's supposed to, what is church, church supposed to mean? Going to church, what is it supposed to mean if, if it's not being done the way it's, be, it's supposed to be done? What's some, yes, what, is, what is supposed to, what are people supposed to be going to church for then? Yes, sir. Pastor, you, it's clear from the scripture you, you, you shared a few days ago how that the fivefold ministry is given for the purpose of equipping the saints for the work of the ministry. So the reason for church is so that people can come to be equipped for the work of the ministry. But then you also explained that the work of the ministry is not just sitting down in church and doing a ministry to ourselves. It is for service. The ministry is the service that we have been given to render to our world. So we go to church to get equipped, get engineered, get fired, so that we can be more effective on Monday to Saturday. And then on Sunday, we call, it's, like, it's like in a boxing ring when people box, 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 they hit each other, and then there is this uh, break in between, and then the people sit down, the boxer sits, and then the coach is telling him, don't worry, you can win him. Just go and hit him some more, all right? Relax, relax, you have this, I tell you, you are winning. So he's getting encouraged. He may have wanted to give up on the fight, but hearing those words from his coach, he feels like, okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. And he goes back to the ring, and then fights out, and then wins the, the, the match at the end. What happened to him was that he, somebody spoke words to him, somebody ministered to him that, that encouraged him to finish his fight. Pastor, church is that place where we come and receive the fire that we need to burn from Monday to Saturday and the rest of our lives. We come there to learn, first of all, where it is we're supposed to be serving, what service it is God has called us to serve. And, and you, said, you said it's very clear, our problem is a clear indication of where we are going. The Bible says that, that we, we comfort others with the same comfort where we are comforted of the Holy Ghost. So the reason God comforts us in our problem is not so that we can be comfortable, 
but so that we can have the resources with which to comfort others who probably do not even who don't even know God to have God to comfort them. So when we get the comfort of God and get trained in church to solve our problems, we start seeing beyond ourselves. And, and Pastor, I actually found out that when, when people look beyond their problems, beyond solving their problems, and start thinking of how they can solve the problem for others, their problems just vanishes. Amen. The problem Amen. they thought was too big, it, it, it's no longer relevant. They just, their life is becoming more meaningful. And so church is that place where we now go to get fired. We go to, to get engineered so that we can fulfill our purposes and, and avoid living empty lives. Too many people in church are just living for the motion, Pastor. What do you think these messages are doing to you? And what do you think these messages have potential to do for the world, for the body of Christ? These so, messages that we are coming, we are coming with every day. Yes, so Pastor, to me, the, the, the growth has been tremendous. <laughs> the, 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 honestly, Pastor, the growth has been tremendous. Every day, we're learning and seeing cl more clearly how we should function. And just by listening, we're receiving ideas, implementation strategies of what we can put to work in our own domains and get results. Anybody that is under my, my shepherdhood now is in for a big time. Amen. Because the, the, the difference is going to be clear, Pastor. First and foremost, we are no longer into the sitting down ministry. It is time everybody got on the move. It's time everybody got on the go. Yesterday I was just thinking that this might actually be what it looks like in heaven. I'm just wondering if Jesus got for a testimony meeting, what would people be talking about? Mm -hmm. The disciples couldn't have met Jesus and be saying that Pastor bought new shoes yesterday. Uh, but Pastor, the, you know, the testimony is going to be about how we are affecting the world. Yes. And, and that, I got, now there is no more testimony for come and tell us how God saved you from writing an exam and then you didn't read and you passed the exam. All that is, is out of the way. Now we want to see people who are testifying of how they are influencing their world beginning from where they are. That's exactly what the messages are doing to us, Pastor. We are better equipped for ministry. Same question to you, Mrs. Fisayo. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> what is this message uh, capable of doing to the world, to the body of Christ? And what do you think it's doing to you? Okay, I'll, I'll start with myself before I go to the, you know, the body of Christ and the world. It's, this message that I've been listening is changing the way I see myself and I see the world. The way I see myself is that I now carry solution. Now okay. it's get, I'm getting more understanding that I am the light of the word I am the salt of the word because if I am light I should go to where darkness is if I'm salt I should go to where there is rottenness so it's now getting me to understand what why I live because if I live to be light if I live to be salt I will not just sit down I will be active looking for where there is darkness to go shine the light of God looking for where there is rottenness to go you know salt it up and preserve life to preserve you so know so you earth. feel you are changing yes sir i am definitely changing in the way i reason in the way i do things in my approach the focus is no longer about myself it's not about my achievement it's not about what i what what i acquire or what i get it's not about what i can do for people what I, lives I can influence, life I can help, people I can raise, people I can impact, people I can you know, solve their problems for them. And going to the body of Christ, this message is actually breaking down, first of all, the mentality of religion that we've carried for long years. It's breaking down that there's a concept of doing things and it should just remain that. But there is a way, and that's the only way if for the kingdom of God, the message of the kingdom of God to impact. So people are getting exposed to what Jesus actually preached, which is the kingdom of God. And he prayed that let it be here on earth. So people in body of Christ all over the world who have never heard about the message of the kingdom, one, are getting it, are on hearing it for the first time and are, you know, taking it to be part of them because from the comment people ask, oh, this is transforming, this is life changing, this is break, breaking my mentality. So people are being actually set free from chakus of religion and it's also equipping them to carry this same message of the kingdom of God to other parts of you know, their nation, their spheres of life and the body of Christ as a whole to gain back its relevance in society, to gain back, gain back its relevance in nations, to gain back its relevance in people's life. So with time, when this spread, the voice 
of the church will be heard as a part or as a center where solutions are pulled out, where solutions uh, you know, are seek you know, after, where solutions get, you know, people can run to for answers and solutions. So this is actually transforming the body of Christ as a whole. Because everyone on the platform listening to this message is sure would never ever remain the same. That is it. Because they will not just keep it to themselves. Because this message is not something that you can keep. It's born so much in you that you want to run and share it with people and leave it out. And you know, it's, it's so practical. And it's not something you can be quiet about. So that is the same thing he's doing to the body of Christ. And it's making the body of Christ to be aware that the message of the kingdom of God is what should be preached and is the solution and that's the solution God has brought to us mankind. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, um, our time is uh, fast coming to an end and as a result I want to read some of the comments that people have written. Uh, please, if you have not written your comments, go ahead and write your comments. Uh, you know, those are go wonderful speeches and wonderful messages we got from Pastor Charles and Fisayo, Mrs. Fisayo. So um, I want also for you to write your comments and tell us what you are thinking about this program that you are watching. And also I uh, want you to go and share the link to this message. I think this message is able to transform and, you know, will be a blessing to a lot of people. So why don't you go and share the link if you have not already done that? Okay, we have Neki Okoro here. My ideology has completely changed. I was bathed and bottled in religion, <laughs> even as a pastor. Okay, she's a pastor. I used to view church as four walls gathering, but I now have a perfect understanding of what church is, ready to break the walls. <laughs> my major assignment now is to strategize on how to bring God's kingdom to my job environment and to also start impacting the true meaning of the church to the congregation. Praise God. Beautiful, Nike. Patricia said, I have changed in my, I have changed in myself tremendously because I am now more hungry and determined to know God for myself and use my talent to influence people for God. Uh, Thompson Abigail said, Yes, sister uh, Fisa, you are right. No longer self, no longer living for self but for people. Rochelle White says, since I've been watching these programs, it's opened my eyes. I thank God every day for Pastor Sunday and is teaching us such a huge blessing. Uh, Ezekiah Ulujobi said, this message gives me a new direction. And uh, Kike Moronkeji said, it is so easy for an unbeliever to believe God is real and mighty when believers are demonstrating the kingdom of God by subduing the earth. Examples of this is when believers are leaders in society and solution providers. On the contrary, it is not difficult to see why unbelievers do not believe in God because believers are in fun working God's kingdom in the society. Instead, they are sat in pews and bench warming, side-eyeing their neighbors and thinking that they are better off than their neighbors. <laughs> uh, DG Adio said, I really like Pastor Doc Sunday Adelaja for his sincerity. Poetry Dr. Adegoke said, The church has become selfish and has refused to stretch forth a helping hand to support the community by preaching and expressing Jesus' mm -hmm. true love. Emmanuel uh, Paul says, God is the government himself, so he's not looking for himself. God is looking for us to extend his kingdom to people. We should stop looking at the government for what we can do for ourselves. Let our problems become, uh, let our problems become our platform to extend God's kingdom to fellow mankind. Uh, Lanon Adebayo said, the gospel of salvation is what Nigerian churches are used to up to now, but Pastor Sunday is coming with the gospel of the kingdom that focuses on transformation of the society. Uh, Jake Hawkey says, the way we display love outside the church will cause more people to follow us to church, and it's universal. 
It is not limited to location. Love is powerful. It can break. Uh, love is powerful. It can break every ground. Europe or Africa. People respond to love. Uh, Patricia said, most students in Nigeria want money to cope. And as such, the girls sell themselves for money. Ooh. Matthew, uh, Christ Grace Ambassador says, Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Yeah. Shola Ujewusi says, Sir, when I went to distribute the free newspapers you are giving to university students last week, I met a student, just for people who don't know, I started writing uh, articles in Nigerian newspapers and I decided to be buying 100 or 200 copies of each and be taking them to different universities to give to students for free. I met a student who said she, HD, has... She had been following you. She has registered a charity. Since she has been following you, she has registered a charity that has distributed thousands of free books to fellow students and less privileged. She was inspired by you. This is a student, sir. The mission is working. Even when you are not yet in Nigeria, then imagine what will happen by the time you come in. I told the girl to send you a message to see how this wonderful effort can be advanced for the good of our country. Brilliant. Okay, Ladon Adibayo said, I learned from Olga's testimony that people who change their world are those who come up with new ideas to solve societal problems, love their nations, love people, love their history, and love their land. Vida Kodua said, Know the sphere of your life. You are called to function and help others with that. Try and affect people in a good and godly way. Please, anyone, if you have not yet shared the link for this message, please go ahead and share the link. Basile Ose Zele said, People deny themselves from worldly pleasures. Still, they are worse than the carnal minded ones, <laughs> the Christians. Christians really need to show good examples, mostly the great fake pastors. I wonder if they think God Almighty is a fool. I pray God will be the greatest. I pray Nigeria will be the greatest son. Amen. And the greatest nation. Uh, Ezekiah Olujobi say, Here in Nigeria, you are considered a rogue, a rogue to help people without money. Okay? I provide home for pe people, for those coming out of prison without hope or direction, but only few people supporting the ministry. People are locked up for 10, 15 years and they are thrown on the street. Nobody cares about them. Wow. That's when they come out of prison. Mm. Bola Luro said, On Friday evening, pastor was preaching and discussing about how God bust his theology about church. And I made a comment that, Oju Mitila, my eyes are open to the truth now that I cannot be deceived by any pastor, prophet, or anybody concerning church anymore. I made that comment because all my life I have never heard any pastor saying the truth about church. Pastor's teachings changed and transformed my thinking. It formatted my thinking and knowledge about God's word. I'm grateful and I'd forever be grateful to God and Pastor Sunday for opening my eyes to the truth about church. I'd sit and testify with Pastor Sunday at Elijah one day like the the people are doing because I am a living testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, beautiful, Bola. Beautiful, beautiful. I would like you to write me if you don't mind, Bola. Write me, let me know more about you. Uh, my email is pastor at godembassy.org. Yeah, yeah, let me know more about you. Jake OK says, mm, After listening to Pastor for a while now, I'm my, I now understand fully why the Bible says love is the greatest of the commandments of God. It is the greatest weapon and solution to the world's problem. 
You see, that's what I was trying to communicate to the people yesterday in Akure. Vida Kodu, Kodu I say Jesus was going around solving problems. We should also go and do that. Look for your skills and help people in their time of need. Uh, Lanon Adebayo says, All God testimony also let us know and understand that church is a school to prepare his followers. Brilliant, brilliant. That's so true. Shola says, The potential of the potentials of Nigeria are great. With the right frame of mind, guided by godly principles, we can turn our nation around. Our myriad of problems can be overcome by our mentality, uh, but our mentality must be God-oriented and forward-looking. That is why we need Pastor Delaja to bring the message of hope to Nigeria life. War, war violence, uh, uh, internet displaced people's terrorism, corruption, etc. can be overcome really. Nigeria is naturally a great country in need of true heroes and honest men of God. Vida says, if we show love, we could actually go places. That is what God wants, not just sit in church church hall to warm the pews. <laughs> uh, Adebayo said, the testimony of Olga teaches us how church should be identified with societal problems and challenges. It focuses on solving the need of the community and city. This is social church, love church and not the usual traditional churches or born-again churches, egocentric churches. In the world today, as, you know, this is a vision of the future kingdom church that we, that we witness the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thompson Abigail said, I was dressed for church, but after hearing this, I called my other friend that we should go out for evangelism to win souls. Wow. I am waiting for this message to end. God bless you and your family, Pastor. <laughs> uh, Jake Hoke says the true church is outside the four walls of the church. Vida says the gospel must be practical in our lives. God bless you, Pastor Sunday, because you teach practicality. This is a model that can change any, anywhere. Hallelujah. Uh, Abraham, oh, Abraham, great. Thank you, Pastor Sunday. Church is not a museum for saints. It is an institution for restoring God's kingdom on earth. It is working. Sheikh Fatima said, Pastor Sunday, Adelaide, I agree with Lyo. Your teaching made it clear that the church is meant to equip the people to find and provide solution to the problem of the society and empower the people by. But what we have been taught all these years is that we are meant to bring our problems to pastor to solve for us. <laughs> Bash Ojelabi says, Church is supposed to be the manual which God has packaged with creation of men to reveal how we can effectively function on earth. Yeah, yeah that's so true. Magnus Amen said, You are absolutely right. Jesus said, We are the light of the world. The church is clear, the church is in clear ignorance. Wow. Oluwayomi Adedeji said, The act that is more dear to God's heart is the act of love. Love is the fulfillment of laws. Romans 14.10 You must pay the price of love for you to see the love of God. The Bible said, Let no debt remain outstanding except they continue debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. Uh, love is the language that the whole universe understands. Uh, show love to someone today because it is a universal language that cannot be turned down when given. Love is the language of the gospel of the kingdom of God. Show practical love to someone today and make the heart of God be merry and see souls one to the side of Jesus. Love God and show it in how you relate with people on a daily basis. This is what we are called to do. Hmm. Uh, Patricia said Nigerian churches focus on women dressing money some people will come and say that they say women go to hell for their hair 
they are wearing their makeup and things like that. You know, they don't have jobs to do. That's why they are doing that. Abasi Biti, God will say, I'm embarrassed by the testimonies I have given in churches before because it was me, myself, and I testimony. <laughs> now I know that my testimony is to tell how the church has influenced my life to be a blessing to the, uh, to be a, okay, to be a blessing to others. No more me, myself, and I testimonies. Here in Texas, the church have corrupted Nigerians, and there is so much fighting in the church. God help us, and thanks, Pastor, for these teachings. Thank you, Betty. Paul Eric says, It is sad to hear about all these ghetto churches that are so full of themselves and blind to the needs of society outside the church walls. The more encouraging it is to hear these testimonies from Ukraine that shows a right understanding of being a relevant church in the world. Thanks to all the participants in these programs and especially to Pastor Sunday. Thank you. Flair Karin Mati, bye. I have so much challenges for the next weeks, months and years and, and the testimony of Olga was another great and wonderful boost. It is never too late to start something. We just have to try, even from nothing. Just plan it and do it. What a waste of resources we have in churches today. I was thinking all along this teaching on how the church is supposed to be. There is no doubt that churches today are bankrupting the kingdom of God. <laughs> That's well said. Well said. <laughs> the worst is that they even don't know what the kingdom's business are going wrong because they think and work in the wrong way. I'm much more motivated to spread these petitions. I started many weeks ago a huge program to evaluate myself for better results. This is possible for everybody. We just have to start. Brilliant. Jake says, most churches today are behaving like the religious church people in the days of Jesus. We have enslaved our lives with church doctrines for a long time. The need for Jesus was necessary because those principles failed to transform lives. That's why God has raised people like Pastor Sunday to help open the, our eyes to come out of that failed principle, out of religion. Mm -hmm. Nigerian Arai says, the church is becoming more and more helpless and needs help to get back on track. That's so true. She, Sandra, says, Pastor, I am so grateful for the things I've learned listening to you. That is why I have made up my mind to acquire more skills and knowledge so as to affect lives more effectively, thereby bringing the kingdom of God to my society and beyond. Pastor, I am so addicted to your messages, and they are transforming my life and ministry. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hezekiah Oluja, he said, Fisayo Ayeye, thank you very much. Well, it's been a nice time with you guys. Uh, I'll be back tonight with another testimony. If you like yesterday's testimony, come back tonight you will find another great testimony of not how God, you know, made their ego, ego a selfish and egocentric needs, but how ordinary people are being used to carry the kingdom of God to the world. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today. Bye.